Within mechanics, a concept that comes up time and time again is that of the Suvat equations, or these being equations that we can apply to an object or particle that is moving with a constant acceleration. If the acceleration is changing, we'll have to use a different topic for variable acceleration, but that's a matter for a different video. Here, if it's constant, then we can say, yes, this uh, object has a quantifiable fixed uh, acceleration. But not only that, it has four other qualities that we can describe alongside it. Their signs, the S, U, V, T, to go with the A, making that acronym SUVAT. The S here stands for displacement. Now, displacement is in the same vein as distance. The difference is, if you were to, say, take a winding path through the country like this, let's say that that distance there was 10 kilometres. The displacement, however, would just be the strict um, distance from your start point to your end point as the crow flies in a straight line. Um, yes, yeah, so just literally, where are you now compared to where you started? It doesn't matter what route you took. Because of this, you can therefore end up with negative displacements, uh, whereas you can't have a negative distance because you'd say you ended up behind your original starting point. And you can have a displacement of zero, even if you took some distance. And that would just mean that you ended up back where you started. Next up in the acronym is U, U being the initial velocity. Uh, just as how displacement is like distance, only in a given direction, it has to be in a straight line. Similarly, velocity is speed, but in a given direction. Not only are you going five meters per second, you're going five meters per second directly in front of you. If then you were to go backwards at the same speed, that would be minus five meters per second velocity. V will be final velocity. So yeah, then just a difference here with your u being, uh, however you're setting up this model for the equation, we'll get to what kind of questions, how can they, be, they can be framed in a second. But whatever the framing of your question is, whatever velocity the thing has right at the beginning, at the exact beginning, that is your initial. And whatever you have at the very end is your final. And finally, T just stands for time. How long is the thing traveling for? So when you look at these questions, um, you are going to find that you probably have three of these variables and you're looking for a fourth. If you can find these like four, so three you know and one you're after, you can then plug these into an appropriate equation. There are five equations that we can think of to use for SUVAT. The first is V equals U plus AT. So if when going through your question, you found you had your initial velocity, you had your final velocity, your acceleration, and maybe you wanted time, you could plug that into this equation of rearrange and solve. Next, we can say that v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So if the question involves, say, your final velocity, your acceleration, and your displacement, but you want the initial velocity. Next, we have s equals a half u plus v t. Um, so again, you've got your displacement is half of the two velocities added together, and then maybe if you want to get time. And over here, these last two, um, depending on who you ask, it's either going to be given as just one equation or separately, because one is a derivative of the other. Uh, the first we could say, as it's more common, s equals ut plus half a t squared, so involving displacement, initial velocity, time and acceleration, or you could say s equals v t minus half a t squared. So say they're very similar equations, they've just tweaked it slightly for either the beginning velocity or the end velocity, um, so yeah, you can either consider them as linked or as wholly separate equations. The point is, there are there's an equation for every, like, if you're missing time, 
there's an equation for the other four. If you're missing acceleration, there's an equation for the other four, and so forth. Uh, there's always an equation that misses one. No equation contains all five, but if that just means that in your question, you already know four and are just looking for the fifth, um, you have free choice of which equation you want to use pretty much. Um, I would just say in general, um, when you have choice over the equation, I would pick the equation which either has like the simplest numbers or the numbers that were given to you in the question rather than something you've worked out just in case, um, say, you had an answer to part A, which you could in theory use in part B. You had the option to. I personally wouldn't use that answer if you have the choice, just in case you made a mistake. Um, you would maybe still get error carried forward, but you want to minimise the risks. Using the numbers they've given you, you, you know you're using the right numbers. Now, at this stage, there's one other thing I want to acknowledge, as you might see, there's something else written in this corner, is the phrase at rest. If the question mentions either something starts at rest or ends at rest or something like that, it just means that either your u equals zero or your v equals zero. I think it just depends on where it's saying it's at rest. So at some point, the velocity is zero. Now, this does not necessarily mean that the object has come to a permanent stop. It could be instantaneously at rest, which means at this single moment, it has stopped moving. Um, what I mean by that is if it was turning around, let's say it's traveling on a straight line, has a given velocity, but then it turns around and comes back the way it came. Now it's gonna have some kind of positive velocity going this way, because we'll say that's forwards. So when it's coming the other way, it will have some negative velocity, because it's now going backwards. But in order to have gone from a positive number to a negative number, you have to have gone through zero. There will be a point right where it turns where the velocity is zero. And that's just where, again, we can um, make use of such properties. Maybe if we're trying to check if something does come back on itself, check if there is another point where v equals zero that you're not expecting to. With all this in mind, Let's just see now how we could apply these uh, equations to a question. Up here, we're told a particle is accelerated from rest um, at a rate of uh, six meters per second squared. What is its velocity after seven seconds? Now, looking here, it may seem that we are given only two numbers to work with. We're told that the acceleration is six and that um, time is seven. But we do actually have more information. Uh, if at first we just write out our acronym just to make a note of what we have and what we don't. Say we have that the acceleration is six, we have that the time is seven. We're after the velocity after this time. So we'll consider that the final velocity. Now actually, we do know a fourth thing. We know our u because it's accelerated from rest. It's starting from rest. It's starting where u is zero. So we have our three variables that we know, we have the thing we're after, so we don't need the fifth, we don't need our s. From this equation then, if we have, so u, v, a, and t, the equation that involves those four is the first one, v equals u plus a t. So this v that we're after equals the zero, which is u, plus an a t, because the letters next to each other, they're times, uh, six times seven, so v is simply 42 meters per second. Okay? So that's just how, yeah, if you reading through the sentences, write out your uh, acronym here, just saying equals for each one, fill in any number you find as you go. Once you've identified four, three that you know, one that you want, you can just eliminate the other one. Find which of these five equations contains these four, and then plug them in and, if necessary, rearrange or just find the missing value. If we just read through the next one, so we're told a car decelerating at three eighths meters per second squared. So we can see here that we can have like fractions and decimals and so forth in here as well. It doesn't have to be um, a whole number. Also note the fact it's decelerating, not accelerating. Think about how what kind of implications that might have. You know, this car passes through point X uh, at 9 meters per second and comes to a complete stop at point Y. 
how far is the distance x, y? So how far between those two points? I'd like you to have a go at this one for yourself. Say, write out your acronym, find which uh, values you already have, which equation you can use therefore, plug them in and try to solve. Pause the video, um, just have a go, and then press play again when you're ready to compare. So, as I keep saying, we'll write out our acronym first. So, S U V A T. Uh, so, going forward, you're decelerating at 3 eighths. Now, so first of all, that's going to go around our A, but because it's decelerating, we're actually going to put a minus in front. That's the trick here. Um, if we kept it as a positive, that would mean we're getting faster and faster. And if you're getting faster, you're not going to come to a complete stop. So we're decelerating, so it's a minus. Now we're passing point x at 9. So we'll start our model at point x. So the 9 is our u. And comes to a complete stop at y. Okay, So we're stopping at y at both our model and the car is stopping. If it's come to a stop, then its final velocity is 0. And how far is the distance x, y. Now it has to use the word distance here rather than displacement. That's fine because this thing will have been travelling in a straight line. Um, yeah, always do look out. Does it say distance or displacement? If it's after displacement, then it doesn't matter regardless. Just use your s. Um, if it does say distance, you do want to double check that it hasn't turned back on itself like the kind of example we're giving here. Because let's say you starting here, but then actually you ended here. Uh, the displacement, if you did that, would just give you the distance between these two points, not all of this. So if you were doing the distance of that, you'd need to do the first leg of the distance up until when it stopped as one equation, then do a separate equation uh, for here, which would give you potentially a negative number because you're now going backwards. Uh, you just have to acknowledge if it's distance, you can't have a negative, so you just combine the numbers, ignoring the signs. If you did it in one go in the equation, it would acknowledge the sign and it would take away the second leg from the first. Here, though, just because we're starting and then coming to a halt, um, we're not then re um, reversing in any way. We are stopping. We're not turning back. It's one straight line. Doesn't make a difference. So here we can just say, what is the distance? What is the displacement? So we don't have time. We can ignore it. So S, U, V and A. Well, the one that contains that is equation two v squared, so 0 squared, equals u squared, so 9 squared, plus then 2 times the acceleration of minus 3 over 8 times the s that we're missing. Just to simplify this first, so 0 squared is still 0, 9 squared is 81. Then here, 2 times minus 3 over 8 is minus 3 over 4, minus 3 quarters, times s. So 81 minus 3 quarters s. To make s a subject, right now the term it's within is a negative, so we can add it over to the other side to make it positive. So 3 quarters s equals 81. And then if we just do like s is 81 uh, divided uh, by the 3 quarters, this gives you a displacement of 108 metres. If we're okay with that, Let's then just finish off by looking at an exam question. So we're told that a cyclist is moving along a straight horizontal road and passes a five seconds later at the instance when she is moving with speed 10 meters per second, she passes the point B. She moves with constant acceleration from A to B. Given that AB is 40 meters, find, first of all, the acceleration of the cyclist as she moves from A to B, and then the time it takes her to travel from A to the midpoint of AB. So to start off with, this is kind of a similar thing to the example we just had, wherein you have a person travelling between two points. Uh, if we want to set up a SUVAT then, just to see uh, which values we know, and we know it's SUVAT because it specifies constant acceleration. Uh, right, so five... Uh, yeah, so five seconds later, at the instance when she is travelling with speed, she passes point B. So, a time of five, uh, a speed, so a final speed of ten, because we, if this is the later, we don't know what she is when she's passing A, and pass B. 
And now, given that the acceleration is constant, and we want to find it, AB is 40 metres, so that's our uh, displacement. S, V, A, and T. This equation was actually the fifth equation. So this was the S equals VT minus half AT squared. So plugging what values we know, that 40 equals, uh, so actually I'll write out 10 times 5, minus half A times 5 squared. So simplifying, 40 equals 50 minus. Now 5 squared is 25, half of 25 is 12.5, so 12.5 A. We want to make A the subject therefore to solve for it. Right now it's in a negative term, we can make it positive by bringing it over the equal sign, so 12.5 A, and then we can move the 40 away onto the other side, because we don't want it next to our A, uh, so that becomes 50 minus 40, which equals to 10. So just round off with A will equal 10 divided by 12.5, because they're currently times on this side, the opposite is dividing. And if you do that, you end up with an acceleration of 0 0.8 metres per second squared. So with that as our answer for part A, we've found the acceleration, we can move on to part B. Now the time it takes her to travel from A to midpoint AB. Now if we, again, want to try to set up some kind of suvat, so you've got your S, U, V, A, and T, where after the time, the acceleration, because it's a constant acceleration between A and B, we know it's still going to be 0 0.8. We don't know what V is, we don't know what speed it's going to have at the midpoint. We also, right now, don't know U. We were never told that. Um, but we can say that the midpoint of AB, because AB in total is 40, the midpoint, half, that will be 20. It's not enough. We've only got two things that we know and a thing we want to find out. The thing we can find out is first is U. We can work out what U is in this model here. Because we're still looking at A to a later point, the, the velocity at A is going to be the same in both equations. If we can get U here, that'll be the same as the U here. We can carry it over. So just to a separate suit that over here, if we're now looking at S, U, V, and T, again, we could use the A, but just in case we made a slip up, I prefer to use the numbers that were already given to us in the question. Um, so we can say that S equals half U plus V, T. So uh, 40 equals to a half. U plus 10 times by 5. Rearranging this to get the U on its own, um, if we were to divide by the 5, we would get 8 equals a half, u plus 10, and divide by the half, you end up with 16 equals u plus 10. So u on its own, if you take the 10 away, you get as just 6 meters per second. There. Now that we know this u, we can say that this is 6 here. We can ignore the V that we don't know. We can now use S U A T. S equals U T plus half A T squared. Plug in the values we know. We have 20 equals 6 T plus a half times 0 0.8 times T squared. Uh, just simplifying that bracket first. So 20 equals 6 T plus uh, 0 0.4 t squared. And if we bring the 20 over onto the right-hand side, just make out a 0 here, if I write this in a consistent order, where it's a descending power, you have 0 0.4 t squared plus 6 t minus 20. Again, it was a positive 20 over here, so when you move it over the equal sign, it becomes a negative, leaving with just a 0. Since this is a quadratic, we can now solve this, either by putting it into two brackets or by using the quadratic formula, depending on whether well, we're able to break it down into nice brackets. Um, if your calculator has this function, you can just uh, plug that quadratic in as is, with this being your A value, this being your B value, and this being your C value uh, in the model of 
ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Uh, if you can't do that, then what we first of all may want to do is just to check if it can be broken into brackets by making them whole numbers. Uh, what we can times by to make these all whole numbers, or to make this a whole number specifically, is we can times by um, 2.5. So times a whole equation by 2.5. Zero doesn't change. This here then just becomes a singular t squared. Six times 2.5 gives us 15 t, and 20 times 2.5, we now have a minus 50. Looking at this, if we want to break this down into two brackets, or what the factors of 50, you have 1 and 50, and 2 and 25, and 5 and 10. Now, you may think of 5 and 10, okay, they clearly combine to make 15, but the signs are wrong. In order to get the use of 10 and the 5 to make 15, it has to be plus 10, plus 5, the same sign, but this here, this minus, is telling us that they must be opposite signs in the brackets, because only a plus times a minus would give a minus answer. We're not going to be able to do this with whole numbers then. Um, and whether you realise this or you just you're not sure, it's fine to use a quadratic formula anyway. I'll just put it up in this corner again. So we can say that uh, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a is going to give you your x values, or in this case, your t. So if you plug that in, if you were to do so, um, minus 15 plus or minus square root of 15 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 50, and then divide that all by 2 times 1, because your a is 1, your b is 15, and your c is a minus 50, you want to include the minus. Doing it with a, once with a plus, doing it once with a minus, will give you two possible time values. So let's say two decimal places. One of them is 2.81 seconds, and the other is minus 17. I always say three significant figures, sorry, not two decimal places. 17.8 um, seconds. Now, mathematically, both of these values work. But we're only going to take one as our answer for the time taken to travel from A to B, and that's going to be the positive value, because we're not going to be considering a negative time, because that would be, if it's even possible, uh, before they even reached A in the first place. The time you will take is 2.81 seconds.